Hey, we have here another integral from MIT Integration B 2017. This is problem number 17. We've got a big integral here with a big definite integral. And the thing I notice, we have a lot of x cubed terms. We have an x cubed there, an x cubed there. This is x cubed squared. And then what jumps out is this here is clearly the de derivative of x cubed or the derivative of x cubed plus one. And so I think what I'll do is make this my u for a u substitution, see if that will clean things up a little bit. So we'll do u equals x cubed plus one, and then du is just gonna be three x squared, one derivative of one is zero, dx. So clearly we've simplified this to a u, we've got our du right here. Now I wonder what we can do with this piece. It looks kinda like, let's see what happens if we look at u squared. So u squared is gonna be x to the six plus two x cubed um, plus one. So then if we had, now we also could get the value for u squared minus one. So that's gonna be x to the six plus two x cubed. And so the only difference between this and this is a minus sign. So this expression, this exponent up here is actually gonna be one minus u squared. Just multiplying this by a negative one. Okay, so now we'll go ahead with our substitution. So plugging in infinity, we just have to update our bounds, but infinity cubed is infinity and negative infinity cubed is still negative infinity, so nothing's changing there. And this piece here is gonna be just u squared. Then we're gonna have our exponential, but we determine that this exponent here is just gonna be one minus u squared. And then three x squared dx is just du. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our exponential here. When we have addition or subtraction, we can write this like multiplication. So we can write this thing like e to the one times e to the minus u squared. And then e is just a constant value, so we'll bring that outside of the integral. And then rewriting it, now we've got something fairly simple, although maybe hard to deal with. We have just u squared, e to the minus u squared. Now the thing that's noticed sticking out to me is this piece reminds me of the Gaussian integral, okay? So from here, I just wanna recall the formula for the Gaussian integral which if we get it in exactly this form, we know the value of this is square root of pi. The only problem is, okay, we have got part of that here. We got this piece is what we want, but what do we do with this u squared? We need to get it exactly like this. So at this point, we're kind of stuck, but I think what we want to do is let's use integration by parts. That's going to allow us to manipulate this. Maybe we can get this u squared into something where we can use it. Okay, so from here, what I want to notice is if we wanted to do sort of another substitution, we can just look at this and pretend we're gonna do a substitution on this. Let's just say we're gonna make a substitution t equals minus u squared. So then dt is gonna be minus two u du. Now we don't have that here, we have u squared, but we can just kind of make this happen. What if we turn, we could say u squared is the same thing as a half u times minus two u, right? That's just gonna be u squared. So rather than make this substitution right now, let's just rewrite this in this form. So now that we've broken up our integral this way, when we do our integration by parts, we want a part that we can differentiate, a part that we can integrate. Well, we determined already that we can integrate this piece just by a substitution. And this is just like a polynomial, so this is easy to differentiate. So let's do the integration by parts and we'll set up our DI method. Okay, so going ahead with our di tabular integration, let's differentiate minus a half u. So the derivative of this is gonna be minus a half. And the integral of this, again, we could do a, a t substitution, but I don't think we need to make a substitution because we know that the derivative of this is just this. So since we have the derivative out front, the integral of this is just gonna be e to the minus u squared. So then with integration by parts, we know that this diagonal is gonna be part of our solution. And then this piece here, this row, is gonna be another integral. Okay, so just rewriting this, we have our diagonal here, minus half u, e to the minus u squared, but don't forget the e that we had in front. And then we just need to evaluate this from infinity to minus infinity. Then this right row here, minus times minus is gonna cancel, so we're just gonna have a half, e to the minus u squared, and again, we have this e in front. But now this half here is just a constant value that we can bring up front. We'll bring that half in front and write it as a two in the denominator here. 
But then we notice this is exactly the same as our Gaussian integral over here. We're in the exact form. So this piece here, we already know the answer to this. This is square root of pi. So we have part of it. We just need to deal with this first part. Evaluating this, the key thing to notice is this minus on the exponent. So this is going to be, let's just try to make this a little clearer. Like if we write it like this, we're going to have e to the u squared in the denominator. So when we plug infinity in here, this piece is growing way faster. So this is going to zero. But when we plug negative infinity in, it's really the same thing. The square is going to still make it positive and it's still going to zero. So in both cases, all of this is just heading to zero. So really all we need to do is just look at this last piece. So then just evaluating this again, we saw that we found that this was the square root of pi. So now just putting it all together, we're gonna to have e square root of pi over two, and we're done. Again, that was MIT Integration B 2017, problem number 17. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.